what's the one thing we can all get away with marking, right? Christians, right? We can make fun of Christians. Nobody's going to bother us, whether it's uh, your friends, your family, uh, your neighbor, the television, Hollywood, the movies, the books. Everyone can mark a Christian. Do they mark other religions? Um, I don't think so. Not as much, right? Um, and and they do it with impunity. There's no um, recourse for the Christians, it seems. We have been left out of the um, intellectual discussion. Uh, we we People won't even go there. They won't even consider that God is real and, and there's a creator. I mean, you, you ask any um, educator, administrator, uh, in in the curriculum, the, the school committees, they can't even consider that there might be a God. They can't cross that line. And that's unfortunate. You know, <clears throat> insanity is what's occurring as a result. We are becoming and are even graduating students who are legally insane. Why do I say that? Well, if you look, the definition of legal insanity, it's not knowing right from wrong. Now we have a legal system that's still based on the Ten Commandments, the Justinian Code, you know, Alfred the Great, uh, Magna Carta, right? Going all the way back to the Just, Justinian Code and, and the Ten Commandments of the Bible. However, they delineate what right and wrong is, okay? But we cannot study that, right? We cannot read about this. We not we cannot um, take part in it, make it alive, make, you know, um, so when we graduate educated children in educated minds, they are devoid of a, a set of values unless they get it from their home. And that's becoming uh, less and less uh, of of a possibility because it's not reinforced by the culture. The culture doesn't reinforce positive values, all right? Yet if you step over the line and do something bad, right, the culture will put you away to jail. So what are we doing? We're graduating legally insane people because they do not know right from wrong and the second definition of being legal is legally insane in our uh, system, legal system, is not knowing right from wrong. So if they don't study what is right from wrong, how how can they learn what right from wrong is? And that, and there is the problem. They are being thrown off a cliff into life without having um, grown and, and um, developed and as a result, they're dysfunctional in a society that is based on Ten Commandments. So you have a major uh, um, void that takes place. And how do people cross that bridge? Well, I think they just do it, but they don't really uh, develop themselves as they should. And, and it's a miracle more more problems don't occur. Um, so my message today is this is <laughs> probably the number one problem in America today. I mean, you can't even discuss Christian uh, doctrine, right? It's or, or differences, comparative religions, right? You can't, you can't even do that. I mean, look at, let's look at the rapture, right? The rapture is in prophecy, or hand in hand, but the, the Bible is a prophetic book, and that's how you prove that it's divine rather than human in origin, that God is sovereign over man, and he can have man write certain things that are from God. All right, and that's what the Bible says. It does that these men were carried along by the Holy Spirit and they were inspired to write these things. Okay, so 
And then you have the prophetic element that I think 25% of the Bible was prophetic when it was written. But even churches don't teach this to their own flock. Yet Apostle Paul had no problem doing it. He taught it to the Thessalonians. The Nikes. Thessalonians, I guess that's how you really say it. And, and in Greece, and, and, you know, this is in the Bible. There's a couple books, First and Second Thessalonians. And, and they were encouraged to learn about prophecy. But now we have whole denominations. They won't even study the book of Revelation. Uh, you know, the reform camp but won't even go there. Um, I mean, how sad is that? And they may think they're smarter than you, by the way. I, I, as much as I've been around a lot of reformed churches and, and people, and certainly from the internet too, but I went to a reformed church. I thought I was becoming more and more reformed. I, I do believe in sovereignty of God over free will. I mean, technically, I guess that makes me a reformed person. I, I'm more of a Calvinist as far as the tulip goes than a, a free willer, right? Um, God saved me, right? And, and God chose me. And I believe in predestination. I also believe in double predestination and reprobation, okay? These are doctrines that we should all be talking about. But no, we don't. We don't discuss these things. But the rapture is something else. <laughs> and not many reformers. I don't think any reformers. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe as much as I don't like him, John MacArthur, he does believe in the rapture. Um, but he, he's a heretic on the Lordship salvation. So what, what good is it if you're given a false gospel out all the time, right? So and he's a double talker too. He'll preach grace, grace to you is his ministry. And then he'll turn around and, you know, he'll create this uh, poor definition, which has been so heavily adopted of repentance and repent and make that um, part of the gospel. When repent just means rethink, rethink who Jesus is. And when you're doing that, you're getting saved. That's thief on the cross did that as he hung there. He rethought who Jesus really is. That's what we all need to do. We do need to repent, but only in the sense of, you know, we're all heard about this Jesus, right? Well, wow, you know, <laughs> he's Jesus, he's God, Jesus, God saves, you know, um, at that moment, um, <clears throat> you, you, the moment you apprehend Jesus is God, Jesus is Lord, I'm glad God is Lord, you know, yeah, I, I believe in uh, Lordship uh, sanctification, you know, and, and Lordship salvation in the sense that he did it all for me, but this cottage industry of um, or, 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 uh, ministerial um, inclination to um, make make uh, everything difficult to get to heaven is is ridiculous, and that's what Lordship Salvation does. But yes, Jesus is Lord, and the Lord does save, and it's easy and it's free, and you can have it now. So that's, that's a key difference. But getting back to the rapture, the rapture, <laughs> is it real? I mean, why can't we even talk about this, right? Um, when God pours out his wrath, as in the days of Noah and Lot, he takes away those he calls righteous. And we are only righteous by faith. It's a foreign righteousness that's laid to our account. We're still sinners. But we're born again at this point. And so we have God's blood covering us. And he sees our sins no more, all right? But he takes away those before he pours out his wrath, as he did in the times of Noah, in the times of what? So that's where the rapture, the catching up. See, we're in the church age now because the Israel rejected Jesus. And there's still one more period of time. It's called the 70th seven, and that'll be a time of Jacob's trial. It has nothing to do with the church. The church has been removed, and 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 that's when the nation of Israel will will um, accept Jesus as as God, as Lord, as their Savior. All right, and then there'll be the close of the age. Then there'll be a thousand year millennial reign where 
Christians will rule and reign with Christ. You know, we'll be given cities, it says. We'll be given, you know, this is amazing stuff that, that God has planned. And he's doing it to show his mercy to the ages to come. So there are still ages to come. Showing how God can choose us to do amazing things in his kingdom, in his will. So, so this is exciting. But what's really going on? The devil is being defeated. Evil is being defeated. Goodness will prevail. And that is, is also good news, right? <laughs> There's like so much good news here. Your cup is running over. You know, the Bible actually says that. Our cups runneth over. But everything's happening for a reason, all right? The God of this age has blinded the minds of those who do not believe. And God is going to send a powerful delusion to trick people into believing this Satan so that they can, you know, they'll get off the fence at that point. You know, there's kind of a lot of people on the fence or, or just throwing their hands in the air, you know, and, and that's soon to, to come when the seven year tribulation period, as I call it, all the sealed judgments are. Uh, and the bowls and the, you know, they're all going to be uh, um, poured out on the earth. And something like 70% of the world is going to die at that point. And if you're still alive, you have to adhere to the Antichrist and give um, a, a way. And the best way is to put a, you know, his number on your head or in your hand. And with technology, I mean, this is a piece of cake. It's becoming more and more evident. So that you got to pledge allegiance to him and show your allegiance. How do you show it? A big sign on your head, right? Because he's going to be providing you for everything, with, with everything to survive, okay? You know, I'm just reading, actually, I'm just reading this book about Constantinople, Innocence of Broadway, Mark Twain. And you talk, there's so many poor people in the world. He's astounded that just seeing all the, the poverty, people are begging, begging, you know. Um, in in one, one of the cities he visited, the, the priests are begging, you know, and they're selling arms or whatever, whatever the heck they were doing um, to survive. I, I forget this was... <laughs> It's just, that's a great book. You want to do research? It's a nice little way to do research. So God um, is going to rescue us. You know, he's going to protect us from the time of, of trouble that is coming on the earth. So the, the time, that time we are not going to be around. That is the rapture. That's when we're going to be lifted up. We'll be removed. We'll be evacuated. Um, and, and this could, it could happen at any moment. That's just another thing. You know, the rapture is, um, just an amazing thing. You, you, you see with Elijah, he, he walked with God. He was no more in Enoch, right? The, these are examples for us. Okay. Um, but <laughs> the, the, the beauty of it is. God is showing he cares and that he is sovereign and it's his will being done. You look at the cross and how all the insanity that took place before the cross didn't prevent Jesus from dying specifically when the Bible indicates he will die uh, for the whole world, right? The, that's the prophecies are laid out in the Old Testament. You can Google this, you know, and we know the Old Testament was written before um, uh, Jesus came along because of the advent of Alexander the Great and how he is like a, a human objective benchmark in history because he translated the Old Testament into Greek as he Hellenized all of the area. So we know the Old Testament had to be in existence 300 years before um, Jesus Jesus actually was born, okay? Now, that's Jesus being born in the flesh. He's always been existence. He says, before Abraham was, I am. You read that in John chapter 8, right? So, we're talking about the humanity, the God-man Jesus when he came to earth and, 
and was a sacrificial lamb, lived the perfect life for us. So now we can have confidence because he did all these things. He fulfilled all these prophecies, right? And um, and then he just turns around and offers it for free to anybody who believes. So this is why it's 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 good news too, okay? But the 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 rapture is imminent. What does that mean? It could happen right now, and that's what makes the pre-trib pre-mill um, position very interesting because it it keeps intact the imminency that Jesus can yes indeed come back any moment. All other positions say. He can't come back until a seven year period or a three and a half year period or, you know, even be, or maybe the, the, you know, the five eighth period, uh, period part of the trib, seven year tribulation, you know. But no, we Christians believe that he, he, who, who hold to this um, position, the pre trib, pre mill rapture, that Jesus could come back before tribulation which makes sense because why would he want to pour out his wrap on himself on the church right that where his body why would he want to do that when he's already poured it out on himself already at the cross right so it, it makes total sense to me why 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 the pre-trib pre-mill um position is if, as far as eschatology goes in the rapture it it, it honors the imminency doctrine and you know it allows for us to say yes perhaps today jesus could come back i mean you got many many churches out there that that don't don't uphold that possibility okay and and uh, do you want to go to a church like that you know this is important you, you the whole mindset of the the pastor and the the church doctrine is 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 limited by by such thinking and and in and these are obviously these are the last days the insanity going on you know i mean israel surrounded by by the for israel to just be existing is astounding it's a miracle but that was predicted in time too and you can look that one up right may 14th uh 1948 so um, we want to be able to talk about these things, but we're not uh, averse in it. We're not acquainted with it. We're not accustomed to it. And so where we are, we resort to talking about the Patriots, the Bruins, the Red Sox, the Celtics, you know, who slept with who, the coaches, uh, you know, doing all this crazy stuff. I won't defile myself by saying what he did. And, uh, you know, we end up, our minds start feeding on itself. And we miss out the, about the greatest things, loving God with our mind. He's giving you like 66 books to dwell on. And we won't even pick it up. It's been pre-slandered. See, the devil really has, uh, has us um, blinded in, in, in the spirit. The word of God is life. It goes forth. Even that one word, Jesus, is the word of God. And that can change your life just thinking on that word. But it can lead you to grow. It's all about growth. You want to grow spiritually. You want to have a spirit in your life. You want to have spiritual food to nourish on. Everybody's talking about eating well, right? And having nutrition, right? I mean, ad infinitum. You're seeing this everywhere. I mean, especially nowadays with all these reels that are out there and the TikTok and the Instagram and the Facebook reels. It's amazing how many <laughs> fitness gurus there are out there. I mean, God bless them. They're doing a great job, but they're missing, you know, I'm not saying they all are. I mean, I don't know everything about all these people, but they... <laughs> I, I, do they have... Uh, the man will not... Man doesn't uh, eat, man will not live on bread alone, right? But every word that comes from God. You know, I spent the whole year just reading every word in the Bible, you know. It took, I did it an hour. I did it a little differently, you know. I started with 
familiar story, but you know, David and Goliath, and I kind of worked towards the front of the book, and then I went outwards. But every word, if, if God is telling you every word is worth something, you should read every word, even the these and the thous and the, uh, I mean, you don't have to uh, <laughs> um, read, read the King James Bible, but uh, you know, all the names, all the genealogies, that's kind of tedious reading it, but you know, it has a cathartic effect on you as you're going through it. It, it, it stimulates you, you know, you're just pronouncing these names. And yeah, sure, sure, maybe um, that that might be uh, a plus, the cathartic effect. H however, they're, they're repleting, replete with stories. The Bible's replete with stories, astounding stories, amazing stories. Yeah, that that that'll blow you away, as as my dad used to say. <laughs> well, dad, this thing blew me away. Um, so that's what I got for you today. Is this this? I wanted to talk about the rapture. That's what I really wanted to talk about. But um, people need to hear that Jesus can come back today. You know, and this is the only position that's actually beat up within Christianity. You never hear anybody take somebody to the metaphorical woodshed over the post trip or the aim mill, you know, or or or, 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 or the mid mid whatever. <laughs> what do they call it? Um, partial wrath, the uh, partial rapture position, um, or the mid trip position. You know, it's always a preacher, pre mill. The people who believe that Jesus can come back today are the ones that get beat up by in Christian circles. And you know what? The Bible says there's a reward for you if you believe that Jesus could come back today, right? And yet all these other positions want to take out that reward, right? They, and it, it says you, you purify yourself by thinking of these things. You really do. If Jesus come back to you, it's a talk about cathartic effect, spiritually cathartic effect. You you purify yourself by thinking, of, and there's a crown laid up, a reward, a reward for you if you if you believe that Jesus could come back today. All right, but these are all discounted by these other um, uh, positions, and um, it also gives you peace. It gives um, you, you wisdom as you see the world falling apart, right? It gives you, um, ability to, um, evangelize better. You have something exciting to share with somebody. Prophecy is a very exciting subject. You know, you look at Ezekiel and you look at Daniel, these, even all this, in the Psalms, it talks about the 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 resurrection and the the crucifixion, um, in Genesis at the first chapter it talks about uh, how Jesus will get his revenge, you know, and, and the third chapter I'm sorry, and, and, you know, you, you look you look at the, uh, all the prophecies, I, I, and they they get you excited, you know, it's good to know somebody has a plan that's coming to fruition and that salvation is so easy that anybody can believe and get saved, you know? But we're told the opposite, that nobody can get saved. You might as well eat, drink, and marry for the, tomorrow you die, or, or or everything's difficult to get saved, right? Or, or, or um, you know, there is no real plan. We're taught that everything's just, you know, um, we're all a bunch of, you know, like plasma, or, or, or a blob of goo, you know, algae or seaweed. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous. You have the Bible proven to be the word of God. Why not investigate it and see where it says we came from? You know, we're all fallen. Why? Well, it's really not our fault, by the way. I mean, yeah, we're all on the hook, but we're on the hook. That's the key. Adam fell. All right. We've inherited his nature and we're all sinners. So we got God's wrath on us, but God didn't leave us alone. He went to the cross and died for us, so he absorbed the wrath instead of you having to absorb it. And you can go straight to heaven and straight to be with Jesus at the rapture. You know, the rapture is hopeful. 
right? He says, I'll keep you from the trial that is coming on the earth. All right, I'll put, uh, um, <laughs> and from the time too, from also the time I should say too. So why um, would you not want to believe that, right? The devil's winning when you don't believe that. Why are you letting the devil steal your joy, steal your comfort? The Bible says the rapture doctrine is a comforting doctrine. Comfort each other with these words. I mean, only the devil would want you not to be comfort, comforted. So believe in the, uh, the rapture, believe, you know, hapazo is the Greek word. Before the tribulation starts, the Christians are removed. Anybody who believed, you're a born again person. You believe, you know, enough of this born again Christian. The born again Christian is like a, a <laughs> oh, uh, no, what, what's the word? <laughs> It, it, it's it, it, it's oxymoron. I you know, you're already if you're a Christian, you're already born again. You don't have to restate the obvious. It's a, you don't have to be so redundant. It, we're more like born again people. A born again person is a Christian. So you have to be born spiritually, then you become a Christian. All right. There's really no such thing as a born again Christian. A, a, a born again person is a Christian. So if you are a Christian, you're already born again. Um, I want to sometimes make that point. So that's key. That's that's all you need. And you are removed. The Christians are removed when God pours out his wrath. There's going to be a special time when this takes place. And that'll change everything. It's going to change everything. The whole world will change as a result. And there'll be a need for an antichrist, somebody who calls himself the Christ, to rectify the situation. The whole world will pledge allegiance to him at that point. You know, it, things don't happen like out of the blue. Uh, um, there has to be a need. An overriding need must occur. Like, yeah, you, you look at such something like a... a a football team, right? Their kicker goes down. Well, now they need a good kicker. And this kicker is the greatest kicker in the world. You never would have known about him unless he came along, right? I mean, I mean, if the other guy got hurt, right? There, there has to be an overriding need that people will accept. That people are being conditioned right now through television, advertising, and everything else to accept something that, quote, unquote, is good for them. And this will be transferred to the Antichrist too. So will the worship of sports. That worship will be transferred to the Antichrist too. And so all that needs to take place is Jesus to come back. It's the second, it's the first phase of the second coming. All right. Now, if if you knew, if you see the Antichrist coming and he's walking around and he's having everybody pledge allegiance to him, well, you know that in seven years, Jesus will come back, but we are told that no one knows when Jesus Christ will come back, right? But we gotta be ready to be waiting, be watching, right? Um, and, and looking at the signs of the times, Jesus said, he, he, you know, he, he criticized people who wouldn't want to look at the signs of the time. You know, it's healthy to look at the signs of the times. Look at Israel, look at Jerusalem, what's going on? You know, look at the church, the, the 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 departure of truth, right? Faith is very, very um, limited right now. The pastors have all been bought up by the 501c3 church. Does anybody really have faith? Not that they're really kind of hung up in all these um, poor teachings that have uh, 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 taken off, right? And that, that's really... Uh, the departure from truth, the apostasy of of um, of, of of what what the gospel is. Now, <laughs> I can go into the apostasy uh, now, but I think I'm gonna stop right here because that'll be another ten minutes. But let me just say, 
that the departure, the departing, is found in Second Thessalonians. Um, it says that Jesus won't come back until there's a, a falling away, and that's the apostasia. Well, that that term is a singular term, and it's so. That's different from people falling away from the truth, the falling away from the sound doctrine that you find in First Timothy. This apostasia is a singular event, and it was translated as the departure or the departing. Up until 1575, when the Catholics got hold of that word and called it revolt as to take a shot at the Protestants, and the Protestants came back 30, 40 years later, and said it's the falling away to take a shot back at the Catholics, right? This is insanity. What's going on in the so when when you when you hear these words like repentance, repentance is stolen by the Catholics too, okay? It, but it means change your mind, change change your mind. It doesn't mean jump through all these hoops and turn and and, and feel sorry for your sin. No, it doesn't mean that at all. It means change your mind to who Jesus is, and believe it's synonymous with faith. They work together. Sometimes it's repent, but most times it's 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 just believe or have faith, right? When sometimes they're together, okay. But you got to get to that point of faith. You got to get to that point of belief. You got to get to the point of repentance in the in under the auspices of metanoia change your mind, meta, change mind, know your, change your notion about something. In this case, the notion is Jesus, okay? So that's my message today. Um, these are amazing doctrines to learn about prophecy, rapture, you know, these false teachers that are out there, uh, knowing about the signs of the times. This is how you should be functioning and taking in all these information instead of just going into a little closet and, and not being able to um, interact with all these uh, various uh, ideas that come at us. True education should allow one to, uh, you know, t um, Taste and see that the Lord is good. You can't even do that. You, you can try all these like Goldilocks theory, right? You, you can try everything, but taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, try it. You want to try all these other religions? Investigate them all. But look at Christianity too. The problem is Christian ministers have been barred off for, for four generations. And, it, you know, they're kind of going after the congregation instead of going, making the congregations equipped and salt and light and going out into the world. But God is sovereign over it all. And, and he will hold these people, uh, you know, to a higher judgment. So that's the message today. I hope you uh, receive it. And I hope you receive Jesus. Just believe and be saved. How easy is that? And uh, always be ready to give a defense for the faith you have, right? Learn the secret of contentment, too. That's a beautiful verse. Philippians. And um, um, cultivate your, your, your relationship with Jesus. And don't sell out. If that church you are thinking about going to is doesn't teach prophecy, it got its uh, you know everybody, it, it got its um, metaphorical rifle pointed at you instead of building you up. I mean that's why I mean as, as much as I don't like the guy Joel Osteen, he's an encourager. Are there any pastors out there encouraging? No, they don't think they're doing their job unless they lay the heavy on the on the church, on the congregation, right? And then half the time, they're out there. Who are they really preaching to? They're preaching to their circle, their circle of colleagues, of pastors, of seminary people that they want to impress, right? That's who they're really. They don't want to free up the congregation. 
You know, they don't want to, they, they, I mean, maybe they do, but they end up not doing it because they they have an agenda to make themselves look good in, through their peer group. I mean, that's a huge issue too. So we got a lot of problems with God is sovereign and his will is being done, which is amazing despite it all. But it says few, when he comes back, few will have faith, all right? So this second coming is a two-phase event. That first phase is the few who go up with Jesus, all right? And um, there's the Bema Seat Judgment, there's a, a lot, you know, the, um, a, a, a feast, a wedding feast. And, um, you, you know, there's dwelling places to hang out with them for, for uh, seven years. Then you come back with Christ. Rule and Christ, rule and reign with Christ. God comes back to the earth with a one breath. He takes out the Antichrist, and then there's a thousand year reign of Christ on earth from Jerusalem. This is what we're all missing out on, and we can't really, uh, we're not allowed to, uh, to, to investigate. And yet we can, uh, you know. <laughs> these lower, lower, con lowest common denominators are what carry what, what, what drives the bus off the cleft, and and ignorance is bliss, and that's what's happening in America today, in the world today. But there's still time. Today is the day of salvation. You can cross over from death to life the moment you believe. So this is still good news. And you can live forever for free. We weren't born, I mean, we were born to die. Don't get me wrong, because we're all fallen. But there is uh, good news that we can live forever. We can be rescued, you know. we uh, And the rapture is a rescue. The Bible actually talks about that. The rescue. So we... Read First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, First Corinthians, chapter fifteen. You know, study the book of Revelation. The church isn't mentioned after chapter four. You know, after Jesus says, "Come up here to John." Right? I mean, John chapter fourteen talks about um, the rapture, if you will, um, verse one, and, and um, you know, there's many other uh, scriptures too that support this doctrine. It's a great thing to study out, but we're afraid. Why? We're afraid to, because we've been lied to and it's been ingrained in our mind that the Bible is bad news. So, but God loves you. God is love. God cares. You know, he, he went to the cross to show his care show his love, show his mercy, show his justice, show his sovereignty in the resurrection. So you can spend your whole life thinking about these things. I think I basically have my whole ad adult life and it's been a worthwhile pursuit. Yeah, I, I like other things too. I, I'm, a, I'm a writer, I write poetry, Robert Kelly, Poetry.com. Of course, it's mostly inspirational. I, I love to read. Uh, that's becoming a huge thing for me. Um, I'm going to have uh, a new room with my library. I'm excited for that. And I uh, hope to, you know, keep, keep being productive. See, that's key. You know, even in writing, when you want to write, you have to be productive. You have to be busy because things come to you then. If you're just sitting around, all right, I'm a writer. I just wrote a book. Now what, right? How come I'm not inspired, right? I got to write this book. Because you're, you're not grinding it out. You're not getting dirty. You're not getting out there. You're not interacting with people. I mean, I interact with probably uh, 50 to 100 people every day on, on a, a meaningful level, um, you know, and, 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 and every conversation is different, right? I mean, some are good, some are bad, you know. Um, but that's the cure to writer's, writer's um, 
but as far as I look at Donald Fagan, the great songwriter, right? But all he wrote about was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And he, of course, he, it, it's all, you know, um, hidden by the beauty of the music. You know, it's kind of like a, a, what Satan would do, right? He, he kind of like allows you to sleep with all this beautiful music. And, but what is he really talking about, right? I mean, and, and that's that's the problem. But then what happened? Boom! He broke up with his collaborator, and then it was just him alone. And all he could, came up with like one or two albums. And he had this huge writer's block, and, and he even had a function for all those years, you know. And, and then he came back, and then what did he do? He ended up writing about more depravity, you know. More, you know, so. What a, you know, that's that's a shame. It's a disappointment to to see somebody so talented, um, you know, you know, the height of creativity is is spent on um, a mindless addiction of men when when you could be soaring like an eagle, Isaiah forty, right, and thinking God's thoughts after him, like Kepler, like all these Christians who founded the modern branches of science. They were Christians. You know, I mean, talk about another slant. I mean, the Christian, the Bible is very scientific. And it's satisfying on a legal basis too. Simon Greenleaf, you know, said you could prove the resurrection in any U.S. court using the standards for ancient testimony submittable, you know, to, to a court. I mean, you know, before before Jesus was born, I mean, there, there was really no regard for women. You know, children were left on the side of the road, even even in the Dark Ages, and even in Paris, France, all the orphanage that took place, the people making babies and just letting the kids go. I mean, there was orphanage after orphanage after orphanage. That uh, I mean. Uh, what did I, I read, reading that in there, David McCullough's book, uh, The Greater Journey. I think it's also in The Innocence Abroad by Mark Twain. Um, you know, read, read Samuel Morse's, well, Samuel Morse's life, he was a tremendous painter. You know, his mom had a great quote, and he came from a, 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 a Calvinistic background. His mom had, had this quote, and it really struck with me. Her name was Elizabeth Morse. And what did she say? She said, live your life preparing for death. Do you hear that in school today? No. <laughs> but that's the way you should. We're all going to die at any moment. You know, all these people die suddenly. I mean, there was a car accident the other day. Kid got killed, 34 years old, on the highway, you know. Um, he got out of his car, and he started walking, and somebody came along and hit him, you know. Maybe he left the, maybe his cell phone was in the middle of the road. He had to make a phone call, right? You know, you get a hit in a, in a car in an accident, your cell phone might go flying, right? I mean, anyway, um, so that's Elizabeth. So Samuel Morris, you know, he's in France, and... You know, it's a great way to study Paris, France, is to study the life of uh, James Fenimore Cooper, who was also, uh, and Sumner, Charles Sumner. These three, they were over there. Margaret Fuller was there. A lot of these uh, Americans went to France to find themselves, if you will, and came back and changed the world in America. Um, but I thought that was one of the greatest quotes I've ever read by Elizabeth Morse. And, and um, that's what <laughs> that's what we need to to do is is to live our lives preparing for death because our lives are short. Even if we go seventy five years, I mean, I'm fifty seven in two weeks. How how short a life was this, right? I mean, we have a a, a, a moment. You know, what is that uh, poem, a quote by Emily Dickinson, um, my favorite poet. <laughs> In this short life, 
that lasts an hour, how little, how much is within our power. Something, something, something to that effect. All right, that's what I got for you today. And uh, that's gonna be it, the signing off. It's a shame we can't discuss these things. These good tidings, <laughs> glad tidings, great tidings. And to know you're gonna live forever. You know, you're sealed with an ownership, a guarantee. The Bible says that, I've said this before, five different places, you know, Romans 4, 16, Ephesians 1, 14, Hebrews 7, 22. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. You know, 2 Corinthians 1, 22, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 5. In many other places, I mean, I'm sure. So, you're going to have a glorified body. Look at my hair. It'll be much nicer, you know. My eyes will be better. My teeth, you know, my skin, my hair, my, my body, you know. You're going to be transformed. You're going to have a body like Christ. You're able to do things like he did, too, you know what I mean? I, we're not going to be God. He's God. We're going to worship God. And, you know, when we get our crowns, we're going to lay them down to him and say, thank you. <laughs> All right, so on that note, I... I will say good night, good morning, good evening. It's Sunday, and um, if you make it to church today, think about what I said about that church. That uh, that I believe that Jesus can come back today. You know, it, sometimes you have to be a pilgrim in life to find. Um, you got to walk with God. You know, you got to be in that desert. You know, you you got to spend time with God because. He, 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 it's very easily to get sucked into a church situation on a social basis. And then the pastor can say anything he wants. I had a pastor say, God cannot bless you if you don't tithe, you know. And, you know, you're so hooked socially, it's too late for you to say anything. That's how Mormonism talk, takes off, you know. People get so hooked socially. I read a great book on... It's like the third edition. I think I had the first edition. It's called The Mormon Mirage by Latine C. Scott, I think her name was. Great book. <laughs> All right, let me take a night. Good day, good morning. And we'll see you next time.